Hello and welcome to Auntie Amanda's Kitchen. Today we are going to make bread bowls. We need bread bowls tonight because we are having vegetable soup and I would like something for the vegetable soup to go into. This recipe calls for two tablespoons of sugar and a package of yeast. However, I buy the bigger bottles of dry active yeast and I add two, te two and a half teaspoons of yeast and a half a cup of warm water. While I'm introducing the other ingredients, we'll pour the half cup of warm water into the bowl. I love my standalone mixer. If you don't have one, get one. It's awesome. Many uses. And it calls to dissolve the, the yeast while you're waiting. So let's get those out of the way. What you want to do is let your yeast stand for about five minutes so it starts bubbling up and and reacting to the warm water and I wish you could be here because once you smell yeast that's warming up for bread bread yeast it smells really good makes you want to bake some more in this bowl we have half a cup of milk a quarter cup of vegetable oil three fourth teaspoon of salt and two eggs and I'm just gonna mix this together before it goes into the mix because there's salt on the bottom and I want to make sure that it gets into it and then in this bowl we have our bread flour in our bread flour I actually sifted it already you can see the my strainer on top to make it a little more fluffier because this recipe calls for two rising periods where the bread rises first time after you're done mixing it together and then the second time is when You've already shaped your bread and you've laid it out. So if you're in a cold climate, I would recommend having your oven on, having a fireplace going, because you it needs to be a warm atmosphere for your bread to rise. Since today it got to 25 degrees and it's nothing but snow outside, I actually have our fireplace going. Our house is about 71 degrees. And during the second rise, I will be turning on the oven, which will also help with the rising process. I also put my bread next to the vent once it's ready. So, it's only been about two minutes, but if you take a look inside where the yeast is, you will see how it's beginning to bubble and foam up. It's the best. It smells really good, we're foaming, we're waiting for it to poof up because this also helps with the rising on both periods. Okay, so I'm not having you sit here and just watch foam, um, yeast rise. We will take a break and we will be right back. Now, if you haven't seen yeast strides before or activate with warm water, this is what it looks like. See how it's foaming up? It smells really awesome. I can't say that enough. <laughs> It'd help if you guys could see it. And too bad it's not smell o vision Okay, so the next procedure to do is to add the milk, vegetable oil, salt, and two eggs. And they're mixed together. Very beautiful color. Let's add it in there. Blend it up well. Once again, standalone mixers. They're the best investment ever. And as you can see, it's still foaming. Best. So now what we're going to do is, oops. was secured all the way just a little bit so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get a measuring spoon I don't need to measure this but to scoop it in here it would be a lot easier once I put the initial amount in here so you want to put about three three cups to start out with three and a half I say three. 
And since I already pre-measured this, sifted it through my strainer, I have like a cloth-like cloth strainer. Since I already used that, the flower is really fluffy. I don't know if you can see. And just to strain it, if you haven't strained flour, bread flour, or anything, all I did was measure how much I needed per cup in here and just go like this. And it looks like it's snowing. Very, very entertaining for those who love to bake. Okay. So what we do is mix it. And when you have a standalone mixer, you don't actually have to knead it with your hands. We will be kneading it with our hands. Not kneading it, I'm sorry. We will be making uh, round balls with our hands. Our hands, yes, will be getting dirty and it will turn into four, about four bread bowls. Very easy. I'm a hands-on learner. I don't know about you, but I am a hands-on learner. And I like to get my fingers dirty. And it's easier for me to learn how to do stuff if I'm actually physically doing it. I can read directions over and over, but sometimes it's easier for me to just be a hands-on learner. So as you can see, it's blending in and blending in. And whenever this is done, So it's gonna, if you have a standalone mix, mixer like I do, it takes, usually while this is happening, I'm in the kitchen cleaning, doing dishes, letting this mix, and then I come back to it every now and again to see if it's ready. This is not ready. You're not always going to use four cups of flour. You may use less, like I did. It's like I use maybe three cups, and it's still sticky. See how sticky it is? I'll show you. How sticky and tacky. You don't want that. See how it pulls? You don't want that. You want it to. You want to be able to touch it and not stick to your fingers. So as you can see, it's sticking to my fingers. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little more and mix it again. It may look dried out sometimes. Ooh, got turned down. But um, it'll pull away and then it'll pull together. Like it's separating down here. If you can see it. It's separating, but as it mixes, it'll pull itself back together. check the tendency still a little sticky but not like it was before I can touch down here nothing it's just up here so now what we're gonna do is remove it see I don't like how sticky that is see that is too sticky for me so what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more of flour not very much bread flour remember it's bread flour <laughs> Let it pull itself apart again and then pull itself back together. Uh, okay. 
Hopefully this works. If sticking to my fingers is all it does, then I'm happy. As long as it rises when it's supposed to rise. And it no longer does when it doesn't need to. So here is the ball. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my pre-oiled other um, container because I'm after this one I'm going to make something else. I have my pre-oiled container that I'm going to store this dough in. And what you do, it's already together, kneaded. You just roll it around. You don't even have to roll it. Sometimes I roll it, sometimes I don't. I just get this out of the way. I just dump it in here. See how this is how low it goes. Okay, when this is done rising the first time, I will come back and show you, and then I will show you what we do from there. Thanks again for watching Auntie Amanda's Kitchen. Please subscribe, and there will be a lot more videos. Welcome back. Well, this is after the first rising of the bread bowls. Now, what it looked like before, it was not that big. But it's big on this one. Now, this actually makes about five bread bowls, four or five. But I want to make only four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my knife. And I'm going to cut it um, four ways so they're evenly. Give me one second. Okay. So what I'm going to do is cut. Well, we just put it on the counter and cut it that way. That'll work. Okay. So four ways evenly, right? Oops. Let's do this. One. It would have helped if I put flour on here, but I didn't put flour on here, so we're going to have to manage. Now remember, um, this is going to be the second rise after I'm done making these bowls. So what I do is I just cut it, just because I eye the even consistency. And as you can see, my pan is ready to go. You can put it on parchment paper. You can put it directly on a pan. But I always like cooking it on a pan. So I'm going to set them on here. And then after I'm done, I know they're not smooth. It's okay. It doesn't have to be smooth. It don't have to be perfect. I'm not a professional baker. I try not to be. I'm just, this is what I, what I make. This is how it comes out. You like it, you like it, you don't, you don't, you like it. Or ask my family if they like it. If my family says they like it, then it's for the books. If my family doesn't like it, then I need to modify the recipe and add my own touches onto it, depending on the recipe and where I found it, if it's a family recipe or not. Because, yes, we have family recipes in here. Please ignore the scratching. The dogs want in the house, but they're not allowed in the house right now. So. The last two bread bowls they look nice right now what I'm gonna do now I gotta clean that up I'm gonna take the plastic from the bowl, uh, from the bowl that was on the bowl and I'm gonna cover this up set it back on my oven for about 40 minutes to an hour more to let it rise a second time once it's done rising the second time then I'm going to pop it in the oven, and it's going to bake for about 25 minutes, and then they're going to be good. Now just keep in mind what this looks like now. Pretty, huh? So, we have the plastic on. Now we're going to cover it with the towel so it doesn't stick. And I will see you in about 45 to an hour. Thank you.
welcome back to Auntie Amanda's Kitchen. So, I made um, bread bowls. Here's time to see what they look like now after the second rise. Holy cow. Okay. So, these are obviously the biggest bread bowls that I have made. Because my bread bowls have never been this big. But, you know what? It'll be good use. They're light and fluffy. I'm trying to, uh oh, trying to detach them from each other, but still really airy. You can see how fluffy they are and airy they are. <laughs> really soft and fluffy. Anyways, I should have detached that one obviously because it looked like it deflated. So here's the bird bowls. I'm going to put them in the oven now, cook them on 425 for about 25 minutes, and then when they're done, I'll show you how it is. Sometimes people mix some um, eggs and water or butter and water together and miss the top on it, rub the top, but I don't do that. I just cook them as is, don't add any extra things. I'm going to cut off the tops anyway. So, once they're done cooking, I will show you the the end part. Thank you. Welcome back to Auntie Amanda's Kitchen. I am now going to take out the bread bowls out of the oven. I cooked them for 22 minutes. And this is how they came out. Very oh, beautiful. I can't cut it open now. I want it to cool off. But perfect. Hands are perfect. It's all perfect. So tonight, since I made vegetable soup, I'm going to be cutting out the middles, put vegetable soup inside, and it's going to be served with dinner. Thank you for joining Auntie Amanda's Kitchen for another video. Have a good night, and please don't forget to subscribe to me. Have a wonderful evening.